Welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room. We were looking at a video there with Mike Hopkins aboard the International Space Station pumping some iron using the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. Today I have a special guest. He is Mark Williams. He is the long title Astronaut Strength Conditioning and Rehabilitation Specialist. Welcome, Mark, and thank you for coming today. Thank you. All right. Well, let's. Before we get into talking about what Mike was doing, it looks a little like bananas to me. Yeah. But um, before we get into that, let's talk a little about your background in strength and conditioning, and tell me how you came about working with the astronauts. Well, uh, it started about uh, 1992 when I was after graduating. I went to graduate school and did uh, my work in exercise physiology. One of my professors was actually a physiologist here. Worked here, did research on exercise, and I did an internship with him and I've been here ever since. I worked about five years in the exercise lab doing uh, research and then kind of transitioned into this group when this group was formed back in like 96, 97 and I've been here ever since. Okay, and so how is it that you found your way working with the astronauts? Um, well, um, you know, I've always been an avid weightlifter through high school and college. Uh, when this group was formed back in 97. It was actually, it was formed to build the station. It was to prepare crew members to do all the EVAs that had to be done to actually build the station. Mm -hmm. So they decided to form a group that would work basically like you would in college. You have strength coaches that train football players or basketball players. It was the same thing. It would be specific to EVAs and training crew members to do EVAs. Okay. That's kind of how EVAs. it started. Spacewalk. Yes, spacewalk. Okay. <laughs> well, now let's get to talking about Mike. I've seen it on the Twitter verse and, and everywhere else in social media that um, Mike is basically a beast. Oh, yeah, he can <laughs> He's be. a machine. He, but yeah. we can all kind of do this, these kinds of things, correct? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's about conditioning. So yeah. let's first talk about um, how do you go about determining what an astronaut's training program would be, for example, Mike. Okay, well, for example, for the most part, when it comes to in-flight training, every crew member, we have a template that we use that there's certain things that every crew member is going to do. Then that, then we take that, we take their strengths, and we take their ability, their work capacity, or whatever, and then we design that to their work capacity. So each crew member will pretty much do the same exercises. They're just going to do it at their levels. With Mike, what we did with Mike is Mike wanted to do a little bit extra. And he did it when he was down here pre-flight training. He likes to do what you saw in the video where we take multiple exercises and put them back to back to back to where you're training different movements but trying to do it with as very little rest as possible to make it a little bit more intense. Mm -hmm. He likes to do that. So what with him, what we did is I worked with some outside folks and to come up with ways of substituting different exercises for certain things. Like in this the video we saw, he was supposed to be doing pull-ups and push-ups. Well, we can't do pull-ups and push-ups in zero G because there's no gravity, so we had to compensate for that. So we did bench press and bent over row, which are fairly similar exercises. Mm -hmm. So. What we did is we just substituted that. We did that for multiple work, multiple workouts that he's been do, adding extra on top of what he's been doing. Mm -hmm. So that uh, brings me to a question that I found actually on a social media. We had a social media question coming from uh, John Fewer. He wanted to know, do rubber bands and elastics have the same resistance in space? Yes, they do. They do okay. have the same resistance in so space. So explain, though. Now, we saw him using the advanced resistive exercise device. Explain that device just a little bit. Well, the advanced resistive exercise device, or the A-RED, it uses vacuums to create the load. And what we want to try to do as it would be a little different from rubber bands, as rubber bands, there's a place and point using those when you're training. But mm -hmm. as you stretch the rubber band, it gets higher in resistance. The lower you go, the lower resistance. With the way that we use A-RED with the vacuums is it provides a constant load, more cons more consistent with free weights. So if I put 100 pounds on the bar, it's 100 pounds regardless of where it is in, the, in that movement. It's how we accelerate or decelerate it that it, it applies the force. It's not controlled by a rubber band. Mm -hmm. The rubber band is a little bit different than that. It gives what we call an asymmetrical force curve as far, you know, as far as a descending force curve is what you get with resistive exercise, not to get too technical, too technical. To go about it, but yeah. <laughs> Work. Okay, so um, also there are a couple of other um, pieces of equipment up there. Can you tell me a little about that? Yeah, those? we also have the treadmill, uh, T2, um, and then we have this, uh, the cycle, mm -hmm. uh, the Cevus, and it works. they work basically the same way they would down here. The only difference is with the cycle, you're not... 
it's a little harder to ride it's a little tougher to ride because you don't have gravity assisting you you don't have handlebars to hold on to it's almost kind of like riding a unicycle but doing it at 350 watts it becomes a little bit more challenging mm -hmm. so okay um and also so when you were uh what was there anything different that you did with uh mike hopkins as, as opposed to any of the other astronauts? I mean, what, what different kinds of things that you did with him? I mean, you kind of talked about some of it, but... Well, from a pre-flight perspective, we didn't do much differently. The in-flight perspective is just going to be, we've added some of these extra workouts into it that mm -hmm. he wanted to do, that he, that he enjoys doing. That's kind of the only really the difference that we did. We're still doing basically the same exercises. We're just putting them together in a different manner, try to make it a little more intense for him. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> but fun to watch. And yeah. um, just, you know, so this about all the time that we have right now, but I, un I do understand that the uh, crew members work out about two hours every day. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me um, briefly, how do you maintain... Uh, do you, is there some kind of way that you monitor what they are doing while they're, cause oh, they're up there for six months? And so how do yeah. you monitor okay, their Okay, so activity? basically what we do is they, they do two hours. They're scheduled for two and a half hours every single day, which equates to about two hours of actual workout time. And then we get data down pretty much on a weekly basis uh, so we know we're monitoring what they're doing on T2 or, C, or the cycle or the ARED. And we can do it by spreadsheets, or we and we also have other data that comes down through station, through computers, that we can look at heart rates, we can look at loads, we can look at pretty much just like you would down here in one G mm -hmm. environment. We, mm -hmm. and that's how we control it. Well, and so you just said, just like what you can do down here, yeah. and so you guys can actually follow along and train with uh, Mike, be like Mike. Go to uh, Facebook.com at uh, slash train astronaut and uh, take the challenge. Thank you. Thanks, Mark, for coming. Thanks. My pleasure.